Princess Stephanie was always the black sheep in Monaco's royal family, but few would say she deserved the final betrayal her own father dealt her on his deathbed. Princess Stephanie Marie Elizabeth Grimaldi is the youngest child of Prince Rainier III of Monaco and famed American actress turned princess Grace Kelly. Prince Rainier led an interesting life. He ascended the throne of Monaco, married a Hollywood icon, and somehow became one of Europe's longest reigning monarchs despite smoking 60 cigarettes a day. As if being a member of the ruling class didn't make her conspicuous enough, Princess Stephanie's parents weren't your regular run-of-the-mill royals. Their intent to marry generated an enormous amount of hype, with the media even dubbing their impending nuptials as the world's most anticipated wedding. Their wedding generated so much public interest that the event itself turned into a giant spectacle. After their private civil ceremony, the royal couple broadcast their religious ceremony on live television the following day. The viewer turnout was enormous, more than 30 million people worldwide tuned in to watch the wedding of the century. Many kids struggled to live up to their family's expectations, and Princess Stephanie was probably no different. She may not have been first or even second in line for the crown, but her overachieving family still expected her to excel. She received an elite education and studied many extracurriculars, including classical dance, piano, gymnastics, and horseback riding. Although she was warm, witty, and intelligent, she quickly earned a reputation for being an absolute wild child, or as her mother referred to her in French, an enfant terrible. Now, being the baby of her family, this may have been your average case of youngest child syndrome, or maybe she was simply rebelling against the bounds of her elite childhood. Whatever the reason, Princess Stephanie's mother disapproved of her conduct, which got more unruly as she got older. Princess Grace was a stern disciplinarian and often used corporal punishment to correct her children's behaviour. Although sharp words were enough to keep her son Albert in line, Kelly allegedly spanked her daughter Caroline every other day. On September 13th, 1982, Princess Stephanie's life turned upside down. The 17-year-old girl and her mother were driving home together from Rock Agel when her mother suddenly suffered a stroke, causing her to lose control of the car she'd been driving. Although Stephanie tried to regain control of the vehicle from her passenger seat, their car veered off the slope of a 120-foot mountain and crashed. In addition to suffering a hairline fracture of her cervical vertebrae, Stephanie also wound up with a mild concussion. Her mother's condition was much, much worse. Suffering from injuries to her brain, thorax and femur, Prince Rainier made the heartbreaking decision to turn off her life support the following night. Princess Grace was laid to rest five days later, but still recovering from her injuries, Princess Stephanie wasn't able to attend. Physically and mentally, the accident and its repercussions had put Princess Stephanie through the ringer. The experience completely traumatised her. The public widely adored Princess Grace, so naturally the shocking news of her sudden death left the world reeling. And then the gossip began. Despite the official accident report's confirmation that her mother was driving the car, a rumour spread that young Princess Stephanie was the car's actual driver and that she was at fault for causing her mother's death. The rumour caught on like wildfire. Whether it was because she didn't know how to handle her trauma or simply because she'd chosen to rise above the gossip, Princess Stephanie initially refused to speak publicly about the accident, let alone address the rumours surrounding her mother's death. After recovering from the accident, the independently minded teenager opted to pursue her career interests in the world of fashion. Flitting from one endeavour to the next, she apprenticed at Christian Dior before trying her hand at professional modelling and swimwear design. Eventually, she'd even launch her own perfume brand, called Stephanie. But not everyone was pleased with her ventures. It seemed that her father allegedly didn't like that his royal daughter was cashing in on her good looks, and he wanted her to stop. 
His tactics started simply enough. He took away her allowance. When that didn't work, he threatened to take her passport away. So, the ambitious princess changed careers. It may seem unusual for a princess to attempt a pop music career, but it turned out that Princess Stephanie wasn't bad at it. Her French song Ouragon and the English version Irresistible were both international hits, with Ouragon becoming one of the best-selling singles of all time in France. But her success wouldn't last for long. Despite her earlier musical triumphs, her career floundered after her last album, Stephanie, received negative reviews and poor sales. She lent her voice to Michael Jackson's worldwide hit song, In The Closet, but received no acknowledgement for her contribution. Instead, the song credited her as Mystery Girl, which meant that for years no one knew she had anything to do with it. In 1989, Princess Stephanie finally decided to address the rumours about the accident that claimed her mother's life. She refuted all claims that she'd been driving the car, and revealed how hurtful those lies had been to her. Princess Stephanie experienced her fair share of relationships in her youth, but it was her relationship with her bodyguard, Daniel de Cruy, that really hit the headlines. They began dating in 1992, and before long, the pair were in love. Unfortunately, this would be no fairy tale romance. It would seem that de Cruy wasn't entirely single when he began dating Princess Stephanie. As a matter of fact, he had a girlfriend who was six months pregnant with his child. It's no wonder Princess Stephanie's father disapproved of their relationship. Before long, Stephanie decided that she wanted to marry de Cruy and asked her father for his permission. Prince Rainier really didn't like the idea and he refused. Of course, his headstrong daughter wouldn't take no for an answer. Her father's disapproval didn't stop her from carrying on with the romance. In the course of their relationship, Princess Stephanie had two children with de Cruy. Louis, born only 10 months after de Cruy's jilted ex gave birth to their son, and Pauline. Because their parents weren't married, the law considered both children illegitimate and excluded them from the line of succession to the throne. Princess Stephanie never gave up on the idea that one day her father might change his mind about letting her marry de Cruy. It's hard to say what finally swayed him, his daughter's constant nagging, the cherubic faces of his grandchildren, or the double bypass surgery he underwent around the same time. In any case, Prince Rainier eventually relented, and Princess Stephanie married de Cruy on July 1st, 1995. This particular ceremony did much more than join Princess Stephanie and de Cruy together as husband and wife. It also legitimised their children. This meant that the succession line to the Monegasque throne now legally included both Louis and Pauline. Everything was finally coming together for Princess Stephanie. But then, just as quickly, it all fell apart. In 1996, the paparazzi caught de Cruy canoodling with a woman named Muriel Moll Hootman, aka Miss Bare Breasts of Belgium. I wonder what he saw in her. Once the photographs of their little tryst surfaced in the Italian tabloids, the proverbial cat was out of the bag. Having fought so hard for the right to marry de Cruy, there's no doubt that the scandal must have crushed Princess Stephanie. The pair were officially divorced on October 4th, 1996. The next scandal in Princess Stephanie's life emerged that same year with the birth of her third child, Camille. This time around, she wouldn't identify the father. The princess's head of security, Jean Raymond Gottlieb, was immediately pegged as the likely suspect, and sure enough, Camille herself has since acknowledged him as her dad. Of course, that's not to say that Princess Stephanie's family formally acknowledged Camille. Through no fault of her own, Princess Stephanie's youngest got the short end of the family stick, thanks to an old-fashioned rule. Unlike her older half-siblings, Camille has zero succession rights to Monaco's throne because her parents never married. But her exclusion might be a blessing in disguise if it spares her from the scrutiny of the public eye. Always on the move, the unlucky in love Princess Stephanie soon fell in love with another man, 
an elephant trainer named Franco Kni in 2001. The couple hit it off after meeting at Monte Carlo's annual International Circus Festival, and even though Kni was already married, the two began an affair. Princess Stephanie continued to push the boundaries of the ordinary in favour of living a more colourful life. It wasn't long before she moved herself and her three young children into Kani's caravan to travel with him and his circus. She even let her daughter Pauline perform in some of the acts. Alas, the relationship didn't last and she and her kids returned to Monaco the following year. Princess Stephanie's romantic endeavours tended to cause a lot of tension between her and her family. Sure enough, her next beau would prove no exception her father's butler, Richard Lucas, or more specifically, her father's married butler. She had dated married men before, but this time her sister Caroline was aghast. Princess Caroline was fed up with her 37-year-old sister's exploits and allegedly accused her of dragging their family name through the mud with her romantic fiascos. Then, Princess Caroline gave their father an ultimatum. Although the Grimaldi family typically attended an annual gala called the Red Cross Ball, things changed one year. Mere hours before the event, the still indignant Princess Caroline supposedly told her father that she refused to go if her sister would be there. Princess Stephanie had every intention of making an appearance, but in the end, Princess Caroline won out and the family forbade Stephanie from attending the ball. One would think that as a born member of the Grimaldi dynasty, Princess Stephanie hit the cosmic jackpot, but it's possible that a dark and twisted incident from her family's past is what's causing her misfortunes. According to legend, the entire Grimaldi family is cursed. Apparently, sometime during the 13th century, Prince Rainier I kidnapped and assaulted a beautiful maiden who supposedly turned to witchcraft to aid in her revenge. As the story goes, the witch cursed the prince, his entire family, and all subsequent generations. The witch essentially doomed the love lives of the entire Grimaldi line by declaring, never will a Grimaldi find true happiness in marriage. This might explain Princess Stephanie's rough track record in the love department, it also might be a load of old nonsense. You decide. Funnily enough, if Princess Caroline hated the idea of her sister dating a married butler, she must have absolutely blown a gasket when she learned that Princess Stephanie started dating yet another circus performer. Less than a year later, Stephanie fell in love with Portuguese acrobat Adans Lopez Perez. But unlike her controversial affair with the butler, this relationship would prove a lot more than a mere fling. Much to her sister's probable fury, Princess Stephanie married the acrobat on September 12th, 2003. But in any case, their joy would be short-lived. The couple divorced the following year in 2004. And there was even more heartache on the horizon. Nearly five months after her second divorce, Princess Stephanie lost her father on April 6th, 2005, following a long bout of heart, kidney and lung complications. His children buried him in the family plot next to their mother, at the same church where they had married in 1956. And as if losing her father wasn't difficult enough, Princess Stephanie would soon feel the sting of his final wishes. Stephanie was always the black sheep of the royal family, but that doesn't mean she deserved the cruel betrayal Rainier dealt her before he died. For whatever reason, he all but excluded her from his will. Instead, he gave the majority of his fortune to her older siblings, Princess Caroline and Prince Albert. Reportedly, it was worth billions. He left Stephanie just 1% of his estate. Regardless of her portrayal as an enfant terrible, Princess Stephanie doesn't actually consider herself a true wild child. She once explained, I don't see myself as a rebel, but of course, it all depends on what you consider normal. The most important thing is to feel happy with what you yourself decided. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos.